Okay. Um, so we do not have a chair or a vice chair today. Um, the vice chair might join us, um, uh, but I know the chair has emailed us that he's not going to be available. So I think the first order of business for the panel is to for someone to step forward and be the chair for the meeting. I can chair it if you'd like. Excellent. Uh, if we just can get uh, agreement from the other members, you kind of have to elect the chair. Awesome. So, uh, Kat Kunze is going to be the, the chair, Terry. All right. Um, so I'll hand it over to you, Kat. I think you, the first thing you've got to do is, um, adopt the minutes. All right. Um, or, like sorry, to... the agenda and then the minutes. Okay, I'd like to put a motion forward to approve the minutes from our last meeting. Can I get a first? Uh, John first, seconded by Jamie. All in favor, raising your hands. Great. Um, I'd like to approve the, sorry, that was minutes. So let's do agenda. Um, can I get a first? John, Jamie, all in favor. Excellent. Moving forward. Um, I believe from my memory on the agenda, I'm not quite there yet that you have a presentation, Jonas, Jonas. Yes. Okay. So I'll pass that over to you. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, so I don't uh, have a presentation. I just have an update for the panel. Uh, one of the things that has happened recently, um, is council has adopted a change to the ADP bylaw. Um, and it was a kind of a housekeeping change. We didn't have a provision for electronic or hybrid meetings in the bylaw. So that's, that's happened now. Um, and that opens the possibility of panel members to be, uh, in person at municipal hall in council chambers. Um, so we're going to go as of next meeting, we're going to go to these hybrid meetings where you can either join, uh, through the current system, or you can be sitting around the table here. Um, we've heard some interest from some of the panel members to kind of come back into the in-person meetings. Um, so, uh, that is going to be an option going forward. Um, the other change that's happened is the requirement for applicants. So if the applicants are making a presentation, the applicants have to be at the, at the hall here, um, doing it in person, um, uh, to kind of avoid the technical issues we've had in the past, because we have our IT here. Uh, so there's more support here for the applicants to make sure that their presentations get delivered on time. Um, and then the last thing I'll note is with the hybrid, uh, format, if you are going to be attending not in person or in person, we would appreciate if you let us know, uh, especially as we, in, for the first couple of meetings, as we get into the groove here. So just before the meeting, if you could email, um, uh, the, the agenda clerk where you get your in, invitation and let us know whether you're going to be attending in person or online, uh, that would be appreciated. Um, and I'll open it up for discussion now, if there's any comments or, or questions. Oh, I see uh, Jordan's hand up. This is a quick question. I probably already knew the answer, but the, will the presentation be viewable both online and in person, despite being delivered at at uh, in person? Uh, yes, correct. So the, it will be still streamed online. Uh, it will just okay. be delivered here. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Okay, so if there's no further discussion, we can then move on to the uh, two item, next items we have. Okay, great. I believe we have Brian up first for the Finch townhomes. So um, we'll put ticket, take it to Brian and the Finch team. Thank you. Uh, so good afternoon, advisory design panel. My name is Brian Daly and planner here at the district. Um, Today, we'll be he uh, hearing from the applicants for a project at 1039 Finch Drive. Uh, it's development permit number 595. It's proposing 25 townhomes. The proposed development is subject to development permit area three universal guidelines. 
um, and they're, the townhomes are part of a development uh, that was contemplated during a recent rezoning application uh, that rezoned the property from R01 to Comprehensive Development Zone 102. Uh, the project has not been previously presented to ADP and staff are generally supportive of the site plan and are requesting ADP's uh, recommendation on building form and character and landscaping as it pertains to the DPA3 guidelines. Uh, so with that, I will pass it over to the proponents. Thanks, Brian. I am Scott Proudfoot with Formosus Architecture. And I'm Tom Bunting from Formosus Architecture. And we'll give you a quick presentation here. Share button. Oh, and then is that the right screen? Thanks, Brian. Um, so this site is at the east end of the loggers east plan. Uh, near the end of the road. Um, we're proposing a lower density of housing in line with the loggers decent neighborhood plan, some townhomes. Um, the site is bordered to the north on Finch Drive, the south by a stream and a, a wooded mountain. Um, and let's jump into a bit of the context here. Um, some of the things that shape the site uh, plan is the the south there's a streamside protection area of 30 meters setback along with uh, the east side there's a swampy area with a setback as well and that pushes the um, former development north towards Finch Drive. Um, we're proposing three groups of townhomes this splits up the built area into a smaller uh, chunks to break up the, the massing and at the north Along Finch Drive, uh, there's going to be a new public trail as part of the neighborhood of many, and we're building a really nice uh, open space there. There's all sorts of uh, stuff planned. Uh, on the right side, a, a playground area. In the center, a sports court uh, as part of a traffic calmed area. And on the left, there's a rain sheltered outdoor area for gathering. And all this is along the new public trail, so it's open to uh, the public as well, not just the development. Uh, though there will, will be kind of development oversight for, for cleanliness and hours of operation. Um, currently, this is the one of the early uh, other things in the neighborhood, but we can expect in the develop, the uh, neighborhood plan to see more happening to the north and the east, although this one will be the end of the road. Not much shadow impact. Um, we're excited about the, the public amenity at the north and what that's going to do for the, the new community. At uh, the south, it's an, a forest interface. And let's jump into some of the buildings. See if we can get an elevation. So these are four-story townhomes. Um, one of the nice things that's happening is by setting the top floor back, it only appears as three stories from the lanes as well as the central courtyard. If I jump back a few and uh, show you that. Um, by raising the land between two sets of townhomes in the center of the lot, uh, we create a three-story interface there and also bring an accessible path up so that uh, they can be visited. The site is affected by a one-meter floodplain, and so there's no occupiable space on the ground floor. But that does give great space for garages and storage. Up forward a bit. The, the massing is done to break up the set of townhomes into individual recognizable units. Um, these are designed to be net zero. So you're seeing a smaller percentage of windows and solar panels on the roof is part of the defining characteristics of the development. The developer Ecoville is very excited to do net zero and wants to ensure it actually works as such by monitoring it uh, during operations and improving on it over time. Um, Some of the materials we're using uh, reflect the, the local colors uh, using good durable materials. So there's some corrugated metal. We got some brighter garage doors on the lower end and the solar panels at the top or the flare on the roof there. Um, and so here, I guess we'll uh, just conclude with this section here. 
bringing that courtyard up between the two left set of buildings on the upper side there gives accessible um, access to those ground floors for visitation. Um, and you see how nice big those garages are. There's something we hear in Squamish. People want more storage. They want more space for their, their toys. So we're excited to be bringing these very livable four-story townhomes to Squamish. And I'll pass it off to Bryce Gauthier, Landscape. Hi there, my name is uh, Bryce Gauthier. I'm the landscape architect for this project. Um, as, as Scott touched on some of the key features. We have the riparian area at the back and the public trail amenity uh, pathway at the front, so-called in the site. And then, and then in between, story about the garages, we have the interconnected um, pathway. Um, so starting at the ground, plane we have the, the the playground area which you can see there in, in blue and uh, that would be a, like a resilient fall surfacing with a, with a, with a berm feature and a slide and and a, um, a timber um, play climb, climbable structure again that would be public so you can see the pathway connection from Finch and then and then we have this Werner of concept um, once you come into the space where the plaza and the and the roadway really function as one we have some bollards for safety and then we have because we don't anticipate at least at certain times of the day the road to be well used we have this concept of actually a, a play area be it a uh, in in this concept it's a, a like a basketball court with some line paints so 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 it's an idea that that you know similar to the the street hockey concept or the basketball concept that during the day the kids can play there and then and then the rest of the the um, outdoor area is it's got a, a covered picnic shelter with uh, will be connections for barbecue and uh, bike bike um, uh, uh, a series of bike racks which are actually right adjacent uh, right there right adjacent to the sidewalk and then we're sort of trying to find these little islands of planting um, on the edges uh, just to kind of bring that natural context to the to the to the 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 development itself and really trying to mimic the mountain and natural and riparian landscapes that are around us it really is a very beautiful site as Scott mentioned and, and we want to make sure that we are careful to integrate that um, more traditional paving into the uh, driveways um, but if you zoom in um, even on, on on the upper upper um, alleyway you see that there's actually a nice little uh, courtyard or entry space and and this is a we're really excited about this feature because a lot of this form of development can be a little relentless at times. But I think we've really done a good job of mitigating that with, with these little plazas with room for a street tree and uh, room for um, people to have an apron to enter. So you see, we've we've got a, a nice paving treatment for that to try to give it a bit of uh, a character. And uh, so moving up to the upper areas. If I could very quickly, yeah, I could skip down a few pages to the lighting plans and the grading. There is a lot of grading um, uh, challenges on the site, so you can see that we have this um, at the um, at the front. Uh, if you want to call it the front door, we have um, seat walls and stairs and and and, and, um, and landings. So so it's a gradual um, way to get up. At the back, we have um, an accessible path. And uh, one thing I, I need to note here that in, in, in the unit, we actually, in, in the accessible unit, we actually show stairs. That's something, it's a coordination error on our part. We have, we, we will not have stairs to uh, some of these units. They will be accessible um, to meet those requirements. And so basically, and the central feature is uh, in keeping with the net zero and sustainability goals of the project, it, the landscape is beneath you and it's kind of a raised riparian landscape or a raised rain garden and then we'll have these this bridge structure which will bridge over it and and meet the meet the town homes uh, in most cases that grade um, and then these town house patios are very generous um, we don't have a lot of planting around them because we uh, or in them because we we went with privacy screens and simple painting because we really wanted people to maximize their use of, of the space um, Moving on to the next page. Apologies for the noise. <laughs> that stopped now. Um, our, our planting plan, uh, obviously bear friendly, um, but at the same time, um, it has a lot of native um, landscape uh, uh, features and inspirations. Moving to the next page. 
uh, some of the uh, plant images that we have going to the next page. Uh, you can see some of the sections and some of the grade changes we're dealing with. And I'll leave it at there and we'll come back. Um, if I have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. All right. Um, so we'll begin with the first round of questions. If we can start with Jamie. Um, just have a question about um, the solar panels on the roof and about, I know they come with some uh, technical and installation challenges and, you know, angles to optimize the system and so on. Just wondering if there was any investigation of using the roof profile to kind of integrate the solar panels a little bit more. Um, a little bit more with the architectural form. So using the roof line, varying the roof line and roof slopes to create surfaces appropriate for uh, solar panels rather than the solar panel array as a separate system with its own geometry kind of floating above the roof. Yeah, thanks, great question. Uh, we did have the development uh, with sloped roofs at one point and there's a confluence of factors that led us here, one is the fairly steep sun angle that's needed to pick up uh, good solar radiation in Squamish. Another one is on the net zero side, trying to keep that building envelope really tight and consistent. So having that large um, void in the roof, it makes it very hard to air tightness, waterproof, and the heat just sits up there. So having to reduce the, the load in the building as well. And then thirdly, um, just the, the size of the development, not wanting to have an extra 10 feet of roof on this to be mindful of our neighbors. And so, doing these solar panels in this a light way, a kind of higher tech steel structure that it is as thin as possible, uh, not to create too much height in the development. Okay, and then just a question around uh, unit accessibility. I don't, I might've misheard, but is there, is there uh, out of the 25 units, are there any units with uh, adaptable dwelling unit um, features or fully accessible units or anything like that? Yeah, the site is constrained by a floodplain of a meter on the ground floor, and that unfortunately rises as we fill. So we can't just fill up a meter, it's an overland flow. Um, so that doesn't allow any accessible units. We've provided adaptable washrooms on the second floor of the two west blocks. So if you someone was visiting, they would be able to take a ramp up and visit the ground floor and use those adaptable washrooms. Um, and beyond that, there's stairs up to the bedroom, so we're not able to provide accessible features in the townhomes. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's everything for me. Okay, great. Next up, let's go with John. Thank you. Um, just a couple quick questions. I think the presentation addressed most of mine. Um, I guess just on the accessibility question, again, looking for just a little bit more clarification, is the the access to these units from that walkway in the in the in between the two banks of buildings? Is that the the idea there? So yes, we have front doors from the the walkway. I mean, people will come in their cars most of the time and come up through the garages. Um, but we've created a really nice entry from those patios facing the common courtyard. Gotcha, thank you. Um, and then uh, just one question on the um, on the landscape side. I noticed that the landscaping and buildings intrude into the 30 meter setback and in one case into the 20 meter setback. Was there any um, uh, consideration for, for habitat restoration or was there anything done kind of recognizing that intrusion into the speed of how was that dealt with? No, we, 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 um, there, there will be, um, uh, restoration planting all throughout that area. I'm, I'm not sure if, uh, that might be a bit of a, I'm happy on to take part. this one. Yep. Um, okay. so buffer averaging is proposed for this proposal, which is allowed, uh, under the DPA one guidelines. So the, uh, one setback was reduced, but it was increased along the wetland to the south and there will be, um, there is compensation proposed throughout the entire SPIA. 
So the the yeah proposal is to enhance the existing SPIA that uh, that is on site. Thanks, Brian. That's that's great. Thank you. That's all I have. All right. Next up, let's go with Luke. Hi, um, I was just wondering if you could um, walk me through what considerations have been made for weather protection at the unit entries, please. Yeah, um, on the ground floor entries, we're proposing a little canopy above the each front door. So the, the overhead door at the garage is sheltered by a two foot overhang and the front door will be sheltered by a little canopy that gives a sense of arrival, having a light and a little shelf above to keep the rain off. On the upper um, kind of courtyard access, there's a two foot overhang from the bedrooms above. And so the front door will be shielded there as well. And we're trying to make a very nice uh, common uh, sheltered area at the north end along Finch that could be a more communal gathering space, rain protected. Okay, thanks. And um, can you speak more to like how the project considers the form and character of the nearby buildings? I'm understanding that there's uh, some new houses across the street from this development. Yeah, are you referring to the six or so detached homes or the new development at the end of Finch? The, uh, well, the surrounding area really, just the, the general context. Yeah, the area is undergoing a big change. There's several hundred units, I think, going on next door at the end of Finch. Uh, there's some very uh, neat architecturally designed homes just across the street in a uh, seven home development. And so um, this is using what we think of as more Squamish materials, a bit of corrugated metal that um, talks the industrial part of Squamish and then earth tones that reflect the the trees and the rocks that make Squamish up um, along with it's a, a more modern architectural design. And so you're not seeing the uh, kind of the timber frames. It is a more traditional lodge look. This is a more contemporary flat panel design. Okay, thanks. Yeah, and speaking about the metal, um, the elevation is just say pre-finished metal. Um, you saying corrugate, like what sort of profile um, and product are you considering for the siding? Yeah, sorry, I mistoke on corrugated. Um, the idea is standing seam metal. So it's standing pretty finished seam. steel. Okay. Um, and the fiber cement, is there any consideration given towards that and the detailing of it? Yes, there is. Um, to Depending on how the construction goes, we, we don't pick an exact material at this stage, um, but we're looking for large clean panels and uh, good reveal joints on that. Would it be a painted product or would it be something that's got the integral color to it? I think that depends on how uh, the cost goes Costing. and where the marketing is and where interest rates are. Okay. And What's then the, the wood on the shelter as well, sorry, is, um, is no, I saw it was noted as untreated. Um, is there actually an intention to have a, a stain or some kind of finish on that? The concept is that the shelter uh, goes gray over time as the wood ages, but should uh, the owners in the future decide to stain it to, to maintain it, they can do that as well. Okay. Thank you. All right, moving on to, I'm sorry if I'm saying this wrong, but if you can help me, Sama. Sorry, I didn't hear you. Was that a question? Oh, no, I was moving on to the next, uh, the next question with Sama. I mean, I think you're on mute still. It's definitely showing a mute on our end. Hello. There you Can go. You hear me? Oh, hi, sorry. I don't know why I, I was not able to unmute myself. Yeah, uh, thank you so much for the presentation. I have three questions. First of all, uh, what is uh, your uh, waste uh, storage uh, strategy for the site? Can you explore more? Yeah, the waste storage, there's an interior room at the north east end of the development right near where the driveway enters. And so we've got a very convenient uh, T-shaped turnaround right beside for garbage trucks. It's a fully interior room with doors and an apron outside so they can drag the bins out and load. Okay, and it's meeting the requirement of the boiler, yes. 
Yes. Okay. And uh, the other question is, have you explored the design solution to provide accessible units or just because of the characteristic of the site, uh, you haven't uh, think about any design solution? Yeah, the, the site constraints are fairly tough and the form of development is townhomes as we're kind of directed by the neighborhood plan uh, for a multi-story building with stairs. Now, there are lots further to the east along uh, Finch that are appropriate for multifamily development, and that would be where you'd see the accessible and adaptable units happening in a much easier way. This is just the former development doesn't allow, and I think we've done something really neat by raising that courtyard and creating a visitable, adaptable second floor for most of the units. Okay, thank you. And uh, how about the zero carbon strategy? Have you also considered that in your design? Yes, um, the developer and owner is very keen on net zero and battery storage, solar panel, and fairly innovative technologies. And so along with meeting Squamish's step four, this will be fully carbon uh, neutral during operations. So we're uh, generating the required amount of power on site There'll be some storage. Uh, there's no gas feed to the site, so that uh, we're talking about electric heat pump water heaters, electric heat pump heating and cooling, and electric car charging in every unit. Okay, thanks. I don't have any more questions. All right, we'll move next to Jordan, please. Yeah, thank you for the presentation. Um, just a couple questions. What is your strategy for snow storage? Maybe that's to Bryce. Um, so, some of the areas that are bollard, there are a lot of hardscape areas, and uh, we're familiar with the issue and the you know the Squamish to Whistler corridor, how important that is. So. It's really an extension of the idea of the Warner concept. So uh, in certain areas on the hardscape, there'll be spaces and then at the edge of, ends of the um, the driveways, be spaces as well. We'll try to make sure that there's a landscape fringe that's resilient enough to handle that as well. Great, thank you. And um, on your planting palette, uh, how will you be achieving some winter interest given the amount of ornamental grasses in the riparian scheme? Um, I don't think we'll just be using ornamental grasses. Um, th there are certainly some, but uh, also the grasses are um, not all the kind that you need to cut down. So we like to use carexes and lamus moss that don't require have to be cut down to nothing because I for that very reason that they they become um, they lose their winter interest. So these ones would actually enhance it, and then we have a variety of. Uh, shrubs that, although some may be deciduous, still have winter interest as well, and then heavy use of evergreen ground covers as well. Okay, thank you. That's all I have. All right, next up we have Julian. Um, just a quick one for Bryce. Um, could you just talk us through the stormwater uh, management um, and your permeable, various different permeable bed paving types, where they are? Um, at this point, we, we don't. Um, have a you know we'll have to work with civil to develop the 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 stormwater. Um, we don't have um, very many permeable paving, much permeable paving at this point. In fact, it's mostly concrete and 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 regular pavers, unit pavers. Uh, we will work with uh, civil to develop some um, areas where um, whether it's underground detention or um, uh, um, some softscape. Um, around the edges, uh, such as swales or uh, rain gardens, particularly the um, upper area where we can use the roof runoff to divert into that. That's the idea of that um, central rain garden. But at, at some of the other areas, we it, it might, may be challenging to do that given the grading constraints. Okay, thanks. Yeah. All right, um, I'm last. Um, I saw in the staff report that you're not planning to do any public art at all. Um, can you speak to whether you considered even putting in small touches of public art that maybe wouldn't be kind of big budget items or if you considered um, any public art for this project? 
we had not yet considered public art. Um, in some ways, the the amenities we're providing at the front there between the the shelter and the public playground is the what we think of as um, the public benefit of the project. Um, but it's something we can think about. Great, thank you. Um, so moving on to comments, we will start back at the beginning with Jamie. Um, okay. Uh, just note that uh, I suppose this kind of typology of the sort of small footprint townhome uh, is something that's driven by kind of site constraints. So obviously there's very limited um, possibilities to use the, the ground floor of these units. I think it's kind of a nice strategy to at least give that space over to storage where possible, since it can't really be used for much else. It comes with obviously some accessibility challenges, um, but that's just the kind of unavoidable kind of site constraint that's pretty common in Squamish. Um, I do think that the landscape design is really sort of balanced. Um, the sort of some of the drawbacks that you get with this type of development in terms of conflicts between uh, playing children and vehicle traffic. So obviously it's quite a bit of hard surfacing because everybody's driving to their own front door. But I really appreciate the effort made on the landscape design to try and sort of formally identify children's play spaces uh, as a sort of a an area of more that's more than just for vehicle traffic. And I think um, it's it's a rare thing to see people try and formalize that as you know this is a space that's uh, they're going to have to negotiate their way through with cars. It's not somewhere that you just fly in through and people have to get out of your way. So I think that that's been really nicely considered. Um, I would compliment the project obviously for the net zero target. I think it's great that there's going to be post occupancy monitoring. Um, because I think that's a really important part of development is that developers and builders learn how to get lessons learned and they get better and better at delivering, you know, this type of housing at lower cost. So I think that's commendable. Um, I'm, I don't really object to anything in terms of, uh, building form and materiality. The buildings are relatively small. I think, um, the range of materials used is, is nice and restrained. There aren't too many. You know, different contrasting areas of cladding. I think that's un it would be unnecessary to introduce any more um, articulation in form or different changes in material. And these are all kind of materials that are, you know, affordable, uh, non-combustible kind of cladding products that are very commonplace in construction. And you know, be nice to see maybe higher quality cladding materials. But I, I totally understand the budget constraints that are. I play on all these projects. Um, I do think that it could, uh, without knowing the technical information, it's difficult to say, but I still think that maybe a little bit more integration of the, the solar system with the broader architectural expression could have been achieved. But the, um, I also recognize the challenges in terms of maintaining simple building form to manage uh, heat loss and be able to you know achieve good air tightness without a lot of construction complexity so um i don't have an issue with that and uh, i think that's that's all my comments all right great we will move back to john thank you um so Commenting, looking at the, the report there, we've been asked to comment on the site plan, building form and materials and finish. So in terms of the site planning, I think I, I like it. It's a good use of the site. I like the density. Um, you're obviously dealing with that constraint uh, of the riparian area. Um, I really, echoing Jamie, I really like the courtyard entrances for the central and western building blocks. Um, I wonder if you could look at some design development on the northern elevation um, to address a, the sort of fairly high walls from what it looks like um, when you're entering that courtyard and climbing up into that courtyard on the north side, perhaps looking at terracing or mounding or something. Um, in terms of the building form, you know, similarly, I always struggle with the these um, 
tall, narrow townhomes and the really minimal uh, entryways. This, it's, there's always this huge, you know, you see a big garage door and a tiny little building entrance. And I really struggle with that. So again, you know, really appreciating that um, attempt to address that with by shifting so much focus to the building entrances, the pedestrian entrance in the courtyard. Um, and then in terms of the materials and the finish, I, I, you know, it works for me. I think it seems pretty practical. Um, the colors are good. I'm really keen to see what these look like when they're built um, and to kind of look at the the photovoltaics there, what that what that looks like. Um, so I think it fits and it works. Thank you. Okay, great. We have Luke up next. Yeah, firstly, thanks for the presentation. Um, I'm going to sort of echo some of the comments have already been said, but I, I, I commend the, the, the net zero uh, target. And I think the landscaping at the, uh, on the, uh, the west side, I'm sorry, the north side is actually, um, it's nice to see so much given to that, especially when you're so pushed to that side of the site. Um, it's nice to see sort of the use of a pedestrian oriented streetscape, you know, um, I think It'll definitely slow people down through there, but allow the use of the space. Um, I, I would um, we're speaking to the spe specifics now to the the the, the wood on the um, the amenity sort of space there. Um, I would recommend some kind of sealer product. I, I also like the the wood weathering and aging naturally. However, uh, the actual how much rain we get here, it, it tends to see mold and all sorts of stuff on it, even even covered. So even a clear sealer might be beneficial. Uh, there are products that do allow it to look like it's not been sealed. Um, and again, the materials. Um, yeah, yeah, kill Jamie. I understand cost is always an issue, uh, especially when you're trying to push to net zero, which you're not required to do. Um, but it would be nice to see them sort of locked in a little bit more and not to product um, scale, but to like standing seam, if it's going to be standing seam. Um, Primarily just because this is still a residential area and, and, and that, that will remain the context for a while. And we've got this mix sort of like this mixture of, of building types in this area, whether it's a single family or these multifamilies stepping up to the bigger development on Finch Drive. I think it's definitely appropriate to, uh, to keep that context and, and, and speak to that vernacular. Um, and, and that being said, it's a kind of an, a, all more important with the, that roof, de roof detailing of the the solar panels. Um, I understand. Yeah, the, it would be. I think it'd be nice to see a, a pitch roof incorporated. But understanding that that doesn't actually always fit in with the energy efficiency and, and that kind of detailing. But I, I think the structure and how that's attached to the building is going to be very important. And also where the edges of the uh, the solar panels line up with the face of that building, um, keeping that detailing really clean and minimal will be, uh, I think, one of the defining factors of the uh, characteristics of the project. Um, and it could really help celebrate and push. Uh, green tech. Um, uh, I think my last comment would be um, the the site planning overall. I think it's quite, it's good the the double wide units which you can park in uh, are together, and then the way you can park on the street, you've aligned that with the smaller units. I think that's great to see, and I can really see the difficulty uh, in in fitting those rows in on the site. Uh, however. I do think that especially those northern buildings, that building row could maybe benefit from a bit more articulation in the entries. Um, the one problem these typologies have is that they tend to be like these deep, dark corridors. And especially with this one going to four stories, it might be better to bring this down to a smaller sort of residential scale um, uh, just to kind of keep it in character. And, and that's it. But um, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing it. Thanks. Thanks again. Great, great. Moving back to Sama. You're still muted. Hello. Okay. Yeah. Um, yes, uh, thank you for the presentation and generally I support the application and I echo other committee members comments on net zero strategy, form character, material, roof detailing, site planning. Uh, I request uh, to look into some design solution to make few accessible units and also consider the 
side to meet the Rick Hansen, Rick Hansen accessibility uh, certification. Thank you. All right, Jordan. Thanks. Um, yeah, I was quite impressed by the landscape design on this project overall. Um, like there's a lot of good stuff going on here and I certainly echo a lot of the comments that have been made already. Um, it's evident to me that a lot of thought and care was put into providing a variety of experiences for a variety of users, but in a very small space. So I wanted to commend the team for investing so much in, in amenity and uh, accessibility. Um, as far as the planting, um, in the muse itself, there seems to be basically a mass plant of blue fescue. And I would encourage uh, the applicant to consider uh, varying that up to add some habitat value, interest, uh, resilience to die off. And also, I think blue fescue can be eaten by Canada geese. I don't know if Squamish has the same challenge managing those populations as Vancouver, um, but something to consider there. Um, and lastly, uh, I think the project could benefit from some shrub planting on the driveway side of the townhomes, just because those there's a lot of asphalt going on in there, and I think just trees and tree grades being shown. So uh, greening that up just a little bit would, would be a nice touch to what I think overall is a great project. Thank you. All right, and then we have Julian. Thank you. Um, thanks for the presentation. Um, I think that was one of the clearest, well thought through architectural and landscape presentations we've seen in quite some time. Um, I've just got a couple of Quick comments uh, with regard to the Brunoff. Um, <clears throat> um, I'd like to see some uh, rumble strips on either side of the entry to the to the Brunoff that just gives an indication to car drivers that they're entering potentially a pedestrianised zone. So um, I can see where you've got what looks to be like a traffic table um, on either side. But I think if they were actually turned into something that gives you a little sound or vibration when you drive over it, that's a real nice indication that you're entering somewhere that children might be running around. Um, the one thing I did notice is the area of play sand um, on the side of the resilient rubber surface there. Um, I'd be a little cautious of that. They tend to turn into um, coyote litter trays. Um, and, uh, you know, they're a nice thing to have, but it's hard to keep it sanitary. I'll put it that way. Um, and my only other comment really is with regard to the permeable paving strategy. Um, I think it'd be nice to see some of these large areas of paving as being permeable um, to help with stormwater management. Um, I'm a little bit concerned that we've got a large sea of um, what looks to be saw cut concrete for the Vunov. Um, I think maybe you could have a bit more fun with that. Maybe introduce some permeable paving into it. Um, it's uh, quite a large area. Um, it'd be nice to see a bit more colour um, on that paving surface. Um, again, to kind of enhance that idea that vehicles are driving into a space that is used for um, play and residents wandering around, etc. Um, but other than that, I think it's a really nice, really nicely put together, very nice presentation, um, and very commendable. Thank you. Um, my comments would be. Um... Thank you. Sorry. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, I'd say looking at being able to incorporate some public art um, as part of the development, maybe um, not one big piece, but perhaps working with some local artists to maybe paint something that you have there or create a design that could become a door to or like a kind of facade to um, perhaps like the waste structure or different ways that you could incorporate um, a little bit of art into the site. Um, but overall, I think it's a great plan. Um, moving forward to the potential recommendations, does anyone have um, an idea of which way you'd like to push it? Um, as a reminder, the options, it seems like most people are in support of this plan. So the first three options would be, the first was that um, this project can move forward as presented and doesn't need to come um, return for any further review. 
The second is that the project can move forward as presented, um, but they would like uh, staff to work to resolve some of the comments just made. Um, and the third would be to return that back to ADP um, towards those comments. Does anyone have a general idea of which way they'd like to go? I could uh, go for B maybe if the, some of the landscape conditions around paving require maybe that the applicant works with the planning staff. I don't personally have anything to separate uh, B from A, but um, if any if any of the discussion means that we want to you know, give an instruction for further work with uh, planning staff, then I could support B. Yeah, I'd be, I'd be in support of B. And me as well. Okay, great. So I will put forward a motion that the advisory design panel supports the project as presented and would like the applicant to work with staff to resolve the following recommendations. Um, and I think that those would really come from the comments. Um, Jonas, do you, do we have those in the minutes or do I need to make some of those recommendations now? It would be good to make some, um, direct, um, maybe, uh, link to some of the comments that were provided. Okay. Um, sure. Um, yeah. I took some notes. Um, so looking at some of the paving areas being more permeable, uh, for stormwater. Uh, rumble strips to show the entering to the pedestrian zone, looking at the northern side of the development, um, and maybe having some more accurate articulation or terracing mounding, um, having sealant product on the amenity space due to the amount of rain that we receive here, um, the importance of the solar attachment and vision lines um, to be done well. Um, some looking into design development to be considered for some more accessible or, um, convertible to accessible units, um, encouraging some variation from the blue fescue, probably, I don't really know that plant, but, um. It's blue, like, blue spiky thing. Okay, great. <laughs> I was just hoping I said it right. Um, and looking at. Um, uh, something that could easily become a litter tray and keeping that sanitary. Yeah, that's um, the sand area. Thank you. Um, lots of things I'm familiar with here. Um, and then, um, integrating public art in kind of small ways into the design of the space. Could I sneak in adding some planting on the driveway side of the units? Yes, thank you. Sorry, I was like writing furiously and I missed that one. That was impressive that you got all that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, thank you. Um, all right, so I think that moves us um, forward from uh, our first delegation. And I think we can switch over to the Hop Creek um, presentation. Thank you so much for coming um, to the Finch Hi, team. Excuse me, before everyone leaves, um, could we get a, a motion uh, to pass that uh, recommendation, please? Oh, yes. Okay. Can I have a first, please? Okay. Um, Jamie, and then a second. Julian, um, if you're not in favor, raise your hand. We'll just, it's a little easier. Okay, great. Um, the motion passes and we can move on to the next delegation. Um, I believe this is with P. Gibbons um, starting. Do you want to take a bit of a break while um, the district kind of does the reset? Can we maybe use like five minutes and come back at start at like three eleven. Does that sound good to everyone? Sure. Okay, great. Yep. We'll see everyone back. I'm ready to go at three eleven. Um, can we proceed? Yeah, okay. we're ready on this side. <laughs> okay, sorry, and and we're okay on quorum if. Sam, Sam isn't back yet. 
Uh, yep, yeah, we're okay. We need five members, and and one of them has to be an architect, so we're all good. Okay, perfect. Um, let's pass it off to um, P. Gibbons. Sorry, I'm not sure your first name. I'll introduce actually Philip. Uh, he's a new, relatively new planner with the district. So, Philip, uh, it's his first uh, advisor design panel meeting here in Squamish, and Philip comes with uh, planning experience from Australia and Whistler recently. Uh, so I'll turn it over to Philip now. Thank you. Um, so I'll, I'll just go through and introduce the project and then um, the design team will go through and introduce themselves. So, um, so today uh, we're looking at a proposal for a brewery at uh, 410 um, 60 Government Road, and it's for a 350 square metre um, gross floor area um, with internal and external tasting rooms. Um, and it's a approximately nine and a half hectare rurally zoned property um, in Brackendale. And the project location is in the northeast corner um, of the site. There are three development permit areas affecting this. Uh, so it's within um, riparian areas, um, flooding and also development permit area three for form and character. And um, the building height has been set at 11.91 metres and it's been uh, raised up to meet the flood construction level, and it has also been uh, set back 30 metres from Dryden Creek uh, to meet the riparian areas regulation requirements. Um, so I'll just pass it along to the applicant team uh, to introduce themselves. Thank you. Hi, my name is Megan. I work for Stark Architecture alongside David Arnett, and we have been assisting with the applicant team with the project design alongside Jeff Levine, our, uh, our client representative, and Julie Van Heften from Soundgarden, our landscape designer. And today we also have the clients Greg and Ingrid McDougall and Steph Wright with us for uh, any questions the panel might have. Sorry, can I just raise a hand? Um, can I ask if your landscape designer is a BCSLA registered landscape architect? Uh, no, I am not a landscape um, architect. Uh, do we have a problem, Jonas? Just gotta press the button. Uh, potentially, we do make exceptions for smaller projects that are um, dele delegated. Um, so. Yeah, there's. I don't. I don't know if we've had any discussions on this today. Did we, Philip? Uh, yes. Um, so, Elaine uh, reviewed um, whether it would be suitable for a non-landscape architect to um, work on such a project, and uh, it was deemed that if they could uh, meet the requirements necessarily in the quality and type of drawings produced that that would be okay in this case okay so yeah there, there is an avenue for um uh non bcsla members to to do the work and it sounds like we've we've uh done some due diligence and this is where we're at okay let's have a look okay uh, as Philip has discussed, we are presenting a proposal today for a small boutique brewery and tasting room sited at Hot Creek Farms. Can everyone see the screen? Yep. So the site is located near the southern end of Brackendale in Squamish, sitting lying between 
the Squamish River to the west of the site and Highway 99 to the east of the site with uh, Easter Seals camp and rural properties to the south of the site and residential properties to the north of the site. Uh, the site is broken up by a railway line that dissects the site and uh, also prominent creek. As one of the few properties within the Agricultural Land Reserve in Squamish, the site brings a unique rural landscape to the community and references the historic farming industry of the Brackendale area. The site is currently used for regenerative animal farming and is the face of Hot Creek Farms, connecting the community with local ethically raised product. With the proposed development to the farm, the farm will be used to produce at least 50% of the brewing product, bringing a unique farm to table experience to the area and promoting the farm's ethos for conscious consumption. As is typical in the area, the site sits within a floodplain and has an FCL of approximately 3.15 metres above the existing grade. We saw this as an opportunity to raise the main floor level of the building, creating a large naturalistic bermed field around the building which offers an immersive space for the local community to gather and connect with the farm. Other pro prominent site features include the mature walnut trees along the edge of Government Road, uh, as well as Dryden Creek dissecting the farm boundaries and additional prominent tree lines flanking the creek and also eastern site boundaries alongside the neighbouring houses which provides a natural privacy barrier between the residential zones and the farm. These large existing trees will all be retained, allowing the building to be nestled into the farm site and largely hidden along the majority of the perimeter of the building. With with the ALR land designation and current site use, the design vision is centred around celebrating a rural industrial aesthetic through both architecture and landscaping. Proposed pathways intend to meander through the fields, gently uncovering the buildings and gathering spaces, propounding the journey from garden to growler. The landscaping aims to further promote an authentic naturalist farming experience with rustic seeding and overgrown planting. The proposed building is located at the northern end of the property with Dryden Creek to the south and access from Government Road. The building is sited between riparian zones, uh, riparian setbacks and statutory right of ways and oriented east to west to minimise noise away from the neighbouring properties to the east as well as presenting a mountain backdrop and views above the, the adjacent uh, field space. The design prov proposes gradual berming around the perimeter of the building to deal with the grade change, sloping down to meet existing grade in as small a footprint as possible to minimize the amount of soil and fill added to the site. By containing the berming footprint within one area of the site, this allows for larger crop fields, keeping the site as usable for farming as possible. A main pedestrian ramp uh, ramps up from the main entry point at the existing grade to the raised building level. An access road is proposed along the eastern end, uh, edge of the site to meet the brewery's back of house. This road ramps up to a loading dock, which is four foot lower than the main floor elevation. For the laneway and parking, a uh, one-way vehicle entry and drive aisle is proposed with one driveway in and one driveway out to minimize the disturbance with traffic along Government Road. A waste room is accessed off this main 
uh, main drive aisle for ease of garbage pickups. And a pedestrian trail connects the north and south edge of the property, connecting the site to the river reserve across uh, river Re reserve access at the south and Brackendale community to the north. The brewery is designed to imitate two large grain bins, one containing a brewing space and the other containing a tasting room, both connected by a covered patio space. The brewing building contains the brewing equipment, including a bar used for small group tasting sessions, providing education around the brewing process, with the equipment all laid out in series showing the start to end brewing process. The brewery also contains cold storage for kegs, dry storage, staff facilities, and an office on a mezzanine level above. And it has direct access to the back of house loading dock for small deliveries. The tasting room building contains a bar showcasing the farm's own product and craft alongside an enclosed covered patio area, uh, creating a year round venue. The brewery and tasting room are intended to operate as one conjoined space, but also can be com compartmentalized into different groups, offering a multi-use space for the community for various functions. Located off the patio, a food trailer and barbecue are intended to provide food options to patrons with the patio extending to the south with additional seating. As you can see in these sections, this shows a better illustration of the raised, raised patio level to the FCL uh, and the grading, the gradual grading change and how that covered patio looks out over the adjacent crop fields. Taking precedence from rural industrial settings, we highlight, highlighted materials and color from traditional rusted aluminum and texture from corrugation and the traditional siding of the historical barn at Hot Creek. The proposed design for the brewery promotes simple forms with exposed structural elements through the covered patio, taking cues from traditional open barn structures. The two buildings utilize corrugated aluminium with zinc metal sheet roofing. The additional bump outs, as well as the waste room, also use uh, corrugated siding. Concrete is used for the retaining walls along the east and west of the building, as well as flooring of the tasting room and covered space. The roof canopy structure covering the patio will utilize wood frame, wood frame construction with wood looks of feet stained to a light walnut timber color, mimicking, mimicking the large walnut trees and grain and color that characterize the property. Caught in steel is used to accent building elements, the wrapping of the concrete pedestals, uh, lighting elements and concrete curbs. Matte black metal flashing is used around fascia elements to break up the volumes of the aluminium siding. We have also woven these materials through the interior spaces to create a contemporary industrial aesthetic throughout the whole development. And with that, I will pass over to Julie to talk about the landscape. Thanks, Megan. It's great. Uh, the landscaping itself um, is is quite minimal. This is an intensive agricultural use. So what we're our main focus is just to really screen the building from the residential properties to the north. And we just want to make sure that by fitting with all of our by fitting with just the many different regulations that we have, we've chosen nice, tall um, 
populace, poplars, just so that they can, they go nice and tall because the building is quite high. So this will definitely help to eliminate um, and block the views. And they're quite beautiful and they change colors. So that's amazing. Um, along the, we're also using screening as well to screen the um, garbage shed. So we have, again, it's just deciduous, but this was will also provide screening just with the branching in the winter time. Uh, along the government road, we have um, uh, kind of like a vegetation strip, and that will help just beautify and clean up the area. This is just um, shrubbery, so it's low maintenance, and again, just to kind of naturalize the area in a in a clean type way. There's only three trees, um, larger deciduous trees, just to sort of break it up so that it doesn't look too wild. Um, and again, they're just, all of it is just evergreen, or they're just deciduous trees that have a um, beautiful flower and just a little bit of difference. Um, to block the building itself where the concrete meets, meets up where it's really tight, we just, just to kind of break up the concrete wall, we just have some of the cherry laurel, which grows, can grow quite tall. And again, it just, it's just to break things up. And that's really it. There's, there's not, there's not a lot of actual introduce, introduction of, of that um, portion. For the seating areas, we would like to have, like, we're going to have picnic tables that all of that, which is just their, their easy way that can be moved if we need. Um, and to beautify, we've got the cedar uh, planters, which again can help keep the um, up on, by the pathways. It's just to add a little extra to something pretty up there. All of the pathways will be um, have light, have proper lighting, so that it it looks aesthetically pleasing in the you know during the evenings as well. And all of the stairs, we'd like to have like kind of like these strips of um, lighting again for safety purposes, as well as um, it would just really beautiful. And all of this lighting is also not, it's not completely, it's not obtrusive. It's all meant to be pointing down, not up into the night sky. We don't want to ruin that view. We just want to kind of highlight the safety areas that we need to highlight. That's it. Um, maybe we'll start, stop sharing. There was a question. Um, we can thank you for the presentation. Um, yeah, could I just go... add uh, a little bit yeah. before we jump into yeah, the panel it. discussion? Yeah. Yeah. I just want to highlight two things. Um, one is that this is a priority application as it's considered employment space, 100% uh, employment space development in the district. So the application is only coming once uh, before the panel as per our district policy. And secondly, I just want to remind the panel that we are looking at agricultural development here that has a commercial aspect to it, but it's primarily considered an agricultural use. Um, so that's why the some of the information provided and the design overall, you know, it's more about practicality and not inhibiting the agricultural use of the rest of the property uh, rather than truly, you know, high, uh, high quality uh, form and character. So just those two notes. Thanks, Jonas. Um, I'm going to go backwards from last time. So we'll start with Julian. Okay. Um... Thanks, Jonas. Um, I have a bit of a problem here. Um, I think the project needs a landscape architect. Um, I'm not seeing any kind of integration of a fully thought through landscape concept that works with the buildings. Uh, I have no problem with the use. I've got no problem with the building forms. I think they're quite fun. Um, and I think, um, you know, there's a lot of, a uh, lot of support there for the architecture. Um, the landscape, however, I think needs some professional help, quite frankly. Um, and I'm probably just going to leave it there. Did you have any, so you don't have any questions? Just I don't have any questions, no. Okay. 
let's move to Jordan. Um, I'm going to have to support Julian in this as the other landscape architect on the panel. There's some drawings missing indicating hardscape materials. I'm seeing some alarming fall heights suggested in one of the sections, so I'm not comfortable uh, reviewing this at this point. Um, do you have any, so you don't have any, okay, no questions. Great. I, I would have to ask a lot of questions that would be indicated in a drawing essentially. So I don't think it would be an efficient use of the panel's time. Okay. And you notice if this is only coming before the panel once, is that an issue? If, if um, we no, I think it, it's, it, it's, it's up to the panel uh, members to provide comments. Um, but it is only coming in front of the panel once. Um, and as I said, this is an agricultural development. So the, we've been fairly flexible on the requirements. Um, yeah, so it's not your standard, uh, commercial development application. Well, we, uh, this goes beyond aesthetics and things like that. There's materials and potentially life safety considerations with fall heights that we would need, uh, whether it's a registered landscape architect or a designer, whoever's the professional on record would have to provide an adequate um, level of detail in their drawings for us to be able to review it with those things in mind. So I totally I understand that this isn't a, a typical um, public realm sort of project. I agree, Jordan, the detail's just not there. If I could just comment on life safety, those aspects would certainly get addressed through the building permit process um yeah I, I don't i don't know if uh, life safety issues with with site planning is something within the panels um uh, realm of of um of scope well i'll phrase it this way i'm seeing things jumping out at me such as fall heights that i'm picking up on as potential life safety issues so again i'm uh, i wouldn't be comfortable reviewing this or indicating support or not support without further information I see this as an incomplete application. Okay, I would uh, I would suggest that we move through the rest of the panel members in case there are any comments. Okay, um, are we are we still doing questions and then comments, or are we just going straight to comments? I think it's up to. Uh, I would suggest that we go around in a question. Uh, format and then move to comments. All right, Sama. Is she still here? Uh, I'm not seeing her, but I don't know if I. I don't uh, see Luke. her as well. All right, no, I think she's moving on. Luke. Sorry, I missed you there. Um, Okay, um, just gonna try and be quick. Uh, is is that I'm seeing uh, six bike spaces, like class Bs, um, on the site plan? There is uh, is that all there are, or are there other ones that I've missed? Could you say that again, please? Oh, sorry. Um, the I'm seeing six class B bike spaces shown on the site plan. I'm just wondering if there are any more, and if I've missed any. There are an additional four around the back of house for this okay. for staff use. Okay. Thanks. And um, the central uh, space that's like outdoor space, you mentioned it was for year round use, uh, but it was enclosed. Um, by enclosed, you mean it's covered in, has it got a roof or does it actually have temporary walls that will be put up in the winter? Uh, there will be screens that movable screens that move up and down. So you can close that space off in the fall, winter, put heaters within the space to make it more usable. Are there any details on the screens? Like, um, uh, like what, what's, uh, what are you thinking? Like kind of wood shutters or like more of a tent type structure fabric? It's a mesh fabric. A mesh fabric. Okay. Um, could you just walk me through the um, uh, rationale behind the location of the waste storage room, please? 
Sure. Uh, so we wanted to make it accessible for, so there is a truck, a GFL truck can use the main laneway. So we wanted to make it as accessible as possible without um, moving further into the site for garbage pickups. Uh, and also we had spoken to, we had spoken to the neighbors who uh, early on had indicated not wanting to have a waste room close to their houses. Um, uh, and then also dealing with the required berming around the building uh, and grade change along with the statutory rights of way. This is the location that we felt was best. Okay. Yeah, thanks. That's all my questions. Great, great. Moving to John. <clears throat> um, I just want to confirm, so you're meeting the zoning requirement for bicycle parking uh, with the, the 10 stalls, and then you're exceeding the minimum requirement for vehicle parking. Is that correct? That is correct. I think we are exceeding by two parking spaces and meeting the bicycle requirement. Um, I'm curious, could you explain what the intensive agriculture uses? What, what's going to actually happen there? You've got like three really small areas indicated. What's that going to be? What's going to go happen in those areas? I will defer this question to our uh, client agent, Jeff Levine, who is more schooled on that. Yeah, hi, my name's Jeff. So this property is in the agricultural land reserve, which uh, I don't know if you guys know too much about that. It's it's meant for farming. This farm has been in operation under BC. It's been a, a farm registered by with BC assessment for the past seven years. It's actually a producing farm. So because we had to move up the elevation uh, to the uh, FCL of 11.15, we tried to ask for a reduction to 9.5. Unfortunately, we, we, it wasn't approved. So because we had to move it up so high, um, in the agricultural land reserve, you can only, you're only supposed, you're not supposed, you're only supposed to take out the minimum amount of agricultural land for a designated farm use, which this is considered a designated farm use. And we do have to raise up the elevation and obviously we don't want steep, really steep slopes. So what we wanted or our big uh, retaining walls. So what we're doing is we're sloping it down and all the area that says intensive agricultural use, that is going to be used for just that. It's actually gonna be used for back to agricultural use. So it's not taken out and that could be anything from, we can have uh, sheep, there we could have we have uh, chickens in the track a chicken tractor it's essentially a moving chicken coop that moves around at part of the regenerative farming process we could have barley growing there we could have apples in the apple orchard growing there so it's an intensive agricultural use and it's outside of the this application because that still is not it's not being developed and, and that's one of the reasons why with the landscape planning our limits it's it's quite tricky because this is a farm you can't take you know there's some you can't go with a landscape architect to tell us what to plant in the, farm, in the fields so only the areas within i think in some place about three meters around the the uh, the the building footprint is actually part of the development the rest is actually still in the alr and it's actually intensive agricultural use does that answer your question? Two, two, two more quick questions. Um, with the pedestrian or the sidewalk or the pedestrian trail there, what happens at the north and south ends? Does that connect into something else? Yes. So the, that's the proposed pedestrian trail. So at the south end, there's an existing crosswalk uh, that goes to uh, the Squamish Nation First Nations Reserve, which has the watershed grill on it. Um, that goes across Government Road, and then at the north end, the proposed crosswalk there goes to a concrete sidewalk on the west side of Government Road and a bus stop. So there's it does not link into a trail uh, or any continuation of the sidewalk 
on that side of the road. It just ends and shoots people across government road to the other side. Is that correct? That's correct because it and goes. My north. follow up question is um, Does the proposed crosswalk include any additional lighting or signalization? John, I can I can jump in here quickly because the frontage improvement is something that are currently under discussion with the engineering department. So the, we don't yet know the full treatment of what's going to happen with uh, whatever is outside of the property, essentially on our road right away. Yeah. Does this does the proposed crosswalk include any uh, lighting or signalization? That's something to be discussed in our with uh, in our discussions and conversations with District Squamish. Any approved, okay. any required lighting or signage? Okay, so as currently shown to the design panel, there's no additional lighting or signalization for that uh, additional crosswalk. And then one more question: I'm just curious be outside about the of the scope of what is in the local area for crosswalks. That would be that would be an anomaly if we had some lightings or signals. Just one more question. Um, I'm curious about the cylindrical building form and why it is felt important to mimic uh, grain silos. Just curious about that. It's a farm, <laughs> and the grain silos are the most iconic feature of a farm. Uh, we grow barley and a circle is the best, most efficient use of space. And that's the, yeah, it's a, it's a bin, a grain silo, a grain bin. It's on a farm. Most farms have grain silos, grain bins. So we're replicating that. We were inspired by thinking of barley and hot farming and, uh, the use of grain silos, how we could replicate this into a building and as well as looking at all of the brewery equipment, which all had this similar cylindrical language, it, it just came that way. And, uh, yeah, it works. It works. Yeah. Perfect. Thanks for the explanation. That's what I was looking for. Okay, great. And back to Jamie. Um, so Luke and John sort of asked my question about bike parking. Um, I'll come back to that maybe in comments because obviously cycling to a nice brewery tap room is one of life's great pleasures. So I think, um, I'll come back to that afterwards. Um, and then just a question, architectural question about, um, the railing that rings the roof line it might have been mentioned in the presentation. So I'm sorry if, um, if you discussed it, is there access to the roof there and that's actually like a safety feature or is that just an aesthetic uh, treatment of the, the roofs of the two buildings? Uh, it is aesthetic. The, uh, there is a ladder to uh, up, up the grain silos uh, that for roof access, but uh, it's mostly aesthetic. Is there anything going, anything going on the roofs that's not shown in the drawings, like any equipment or anything that's roof mounted? Uh, not at this stage. Okay. And then just, uh, wondering about the structural material, you might've mentioned it, but the structural material for the two cylindrical buildings themselves, are they, are they, um, wood frame buildings or steel stud or, or concrete or. They, uh. Uh, we have HSS columns uh, with uh, two by eight. So there's an inner ring and an outer ring of corrugation. So we get that corrugation through the inside as well okay. uh, and held together with steel HSSs uh, to hold the roof up. And um, outside of that plane, then the uh, corrugated aluminium cladding is that like a custom profile so that the panels are actually curved or is it going to be made out of short sections of kind of standard stock? Because uh, you know, it's, it's a reasonably tight radius. I'm just wondering if it's, if you've got that far with detailing. 
Uh, yes, uh, the panels are curved to meet the radius. They've been manufactured or they can be manufactured that way to meet the radius. Um, that's everything I have. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Um, in the staff report, it says, uh, for public art details are to be provided. I was wondering if you could go into any thoughts you've had towards public art on the site. Uh, it is not something that we've currently looked at, but, uh, something that we will, uh, work with planning. All right, thank you. Um, let's go back through comments. Um, Julian and Jordan, I feel like you've kind of already given some comments, but it, raise your hand really quick if you'd like to speak again. All right, let's go with Jordan. Okay, um, well, I've, I get that this is an agricultural project, but one thing I just wanted to say is we're encouraging the public to come here for like a commercial and, uh, I don't know, um, beer tasting use and I think that the fact that that use is encouraged requires a level of due diligence that needs to be demonstrated that we're not seeing and I would yeah again say this application is not complete to a point where I could support it in its current form. And um, Julian did you want to say anything else? No I don't think it'd be appropriate to to offer any further comment I would agree with Jordan. Um, I don't think the application is complete. Okay, great. Um, moving on to Luke for comment. Okay, I'm going to try and keep my comments to the architecture and the kind of general site planning. Um, the Yeah, the, thanks for the presentation, by the way. Um, the siting of the building, I think, yeah, is appropriate given the, res the restraints you've got on the site, um, the orientation of it is definitely maximizing the sun and everything. Um, I think using materials is, is quite applicable to the concept that you've got and I support the, the circular buildings. It's nice to have something a bit playful in this context. Uh, it's a nice kind of refreshing change from stuff that we're kind of stuck with around here. Um, uh, I think really what it comes down to is that the devil will be in the details uh, on this one. Uh, I applaud your use of core 10. However, we live in this lovely changing seasons of this space. And um, I think it definitely, wherever it, the core 10 does touch the ground, it appears that you've used it on the post spaces, the base of the building and on some bollards. Uh, there needs to be a detailing of potentially rock to allow drainage in there and also keeping the concrete away from it. Because in the winter, when the salt gets near that, it will really ruin the building and it will make it a mess in the future, especially if this is going to be around for a while. Um, the, looking at the parking, you've gone for angled parking, um, which is fine, but the, the southernmost parking spot looks like it could be a spot tight. I'm, I'm just knowing it. I, I don't have any really information. I'm making an assumption, so I, I could be wrong, but, um, uh, that might be worth a look at. And then the bike parking spaces, uh, yeah, as Jamie is correct. Um, I'm also a lover of beer and I like to ride my bike there. Um, so I do think that uh, although you're meeting the bylaw, I th uh, six spaces is actually quite small uh, considering how many people like this, this occupancy looks like it can hold. Um, I think it could suffer, uh, like, um, <clears throat> sorry, benefit from at least two more racks maybe uh, to accommodate you know, a total of 18. Um, and yeah, I, th I think that I can leave my comments there. Thank you. Moving on to John. Thanks, Pat. Um, so my comments, I'd say it is, it seems like a really light application package for this project. Um, I think that, it, that I would have, would have liked to see a uh, more significant uh, set of drawings uh, and, and more detail on it. Um, I would say that I, I don't like seeing the an exceedance of the required minimum vehicle parking at all. I think that land should be uh, better used with for something else. And I really don't like seeing that only the minimum uh, standard for bicycle parking uh, being provided. I think that you should provide significantly more bicycle parking. Um, again, difficult to assess with the really minimal drawings that we've been provided, but just one 
kind of site planning comment um, with that, that zigzag ramp up from the parking area to the, the building, wondering if there's maybe a better way to use the topography um, and have fewer sharp corners or, or less corners that are less sharp there, uh, if that may be an improvement. Um, and um, yeah, just in turn, I'm really pleased to see the um, pedestrian uh, trail or the sidewalk along there. That's a dark uh, part of Government Road, and I definitely, you know, this is more of a comment for the planning department, I suppose, or engineering at the district, but I really like to see um, that be a more sort of systematic approach there uh, along Government Road. Um, so hopefully nothing in this design precludes um, that from happening. Uh, and I would also suggest that if there's going to be additional crosswalks, um, there's some thought given to, to lighting, whether that's sort of off-site infrastructure funded by this development or something else um, that's probably important. All right, moving to Jamie. Um, yeah, so this is a slightly unusual application in the sense that our, um, our terms of reference for it are a bit restricted, but I can kind of move quickly through it. So I'd commend the uh, architect and client for sort of going with a pretty distinctive um, approach to architectural design and sort of making this a distinctive de destination. I really kind of to echo Luke's comments, I kind of enjoy the slight whimsy of the round sort of buildings. And I, it doesn't bother me at all that it's a direct sort of um, reference to grain silos. I think that's totally fine. and. Uh, what I'd say is that I'd encourage architects with the support of the client to really um, follow through with, you know, really good detailing, good use of materials, because they're such simple buildings that I think um, there's an opportunity to produce a really elegant result if, you know, really the small details around cladding uh, windows are followed through. I quite like the small regular repetition of the windows. It kind of works nicely on a curve. Um, I do think that the roof canopy spanning between the two buildings and also the small canopies kind of abutting the structure seem a little bit unresolved and could use a little bit more development. There's very nice symmetry and simplicity in plan. And then when I look at the section of the roof through the middle, I wonder if another form of roof in between something that's, you know, echoing the sort of light thin steel language that you see elsewhere about something that's a little bit more, a little bit sharper, maybe a flat or an inverted roof, something with some interesting symmetry to link the two. And it just seems like that main roof canopy is sort of just crashing into the, the really elegant forms of the two buildings. And I think a little bit of adjustment there could really improve things. Um, definitely on the, the bike parking and the car parking issue, I think, you know, for places where you're bringing people to come and enjoy alcohol, your minimum parking should really become a maximum. And uh, going beyond that is maybe not a great idea. And that is, and then I think providing more bar, bike parking is a really cheap thing that, you know, the bylaw doesn't require a lot of bike parking, but that's maybe a, an oversight in the bylaw. Like we want people to get home safely after having a couple of beers here and um, encourage sort of healthy lifestyle in Squamish and there's, you know, there's enough space paved area provided on site to provide a lot more bike parking. Um, so yeah, other than that, just, um, we won't be seeing this coming back. It seems by the, um, the way that the application works, but I look forward to seeing, you know, the project take shape. It's got a lot of potential. Um, it's quite distinctive. You see a lot of, as Luke said, like a lot of the same kind of building forms, corrugated metal for once is actually really appropriate here. <laughs> so I think it just, it'll, uh, succeed by being really nicely detailed. And I hope that, you know, applicant team really follows through with that. That's my comments. Great. Um, my comment is, I think the site has so much opportunity to have a cool um, tie in of public art, having, you know, the, both the brewery space and the agricultural space. So if it is something that you could consider in the future, I think, um, it would be a great thing to incorporate. 
Um, so I think that concludes our round of comments. Um, so given it's for the priority project, we are not allowed to go with any of the uh, last two options. So based on what I've heard from the committee today, um, we would like to make a motion for staff to resolve some of the following recommendations. Does that sound good to everyone? And I'll go through some of the recommendations that were listed. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah. So I, they, we'd like to make a motion that um, the advisory design panel would like the applicant to work with the staff to resolve the following recommendations, which are to give the roof through the middle um, a bit more thought encouraging um, the quality of materials in the cladding and the windows to enhance the simple simplicity of the space um, considering design um, possibilities to change the sharp corners on the zigzag ramp um, noting that this is a very incomplete application um, when it does come to landscaping and that um, the committee is very in agreement that this needs a landscape architect. Um, I wasn't sure, uh, Luke, what you're talking about with the something 10, um, that material, but um, the rocks to allow drainage. Oh, I was talking about the core 10 steel, so a uh, weathering steel. Okay, thank um, you. Yeah, and uh, just allowing drainage at the bottom of it um, okay. rather than casting Perfect. concrete against it. I'll just blow it. Perfect. Okay. Um, so add that to the minute. Um, I I don't think necessarily this needs a landscape architect. I just think it needs landscape drawings and whatever professional is required on this is up to um, the district as well as the province, the regulator. Great. Um uh that the southernmost parking spot. Um, it might be a little tight and perhaps maybe it could even be taken out um, and that the site could benefit from more bike parking and less um, car parking and outside of the scope of this a bit, um, but just a general note to the district about lighting if there is an additional crosswalk. Is there anything I missed? All right. Um, can we make a motion to put that forward? So, and I have a first and a second. Is that a motion for B? Yes, motion for B with yep. the following that, that we just talked about. So yep. Jamie first, Luke, Luke second, um, and then all in favor, raise of hands. Okay, I did it the opposite way last time. All in favor, don't raise your hand, my bad. Okay, so moving forward, uh, that passes uh with the b consideration uh thank you so much to the um, presenters and i think that this is the part of the meeting that i'm a little bit less familiar with um maybe you notice you can help we go to the status of recommendations to council and referrals from council i'm not exactly sure what that is uh there are none on the agenda it's just a kind of a standing uh -oh. item gotcha all right then i will make a motion that we terminate to this meeting can i have a first john second jamie all in favor don't raise your hand all right motion to terminate the meeting has passed um thank you all so much